is our end of the review uh, end of the end of the season show. So we're gonna review our top ten moments uh, from last year. Uh, from the I always call it the 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 twenty twenty one NHL season because they didn't play a game in twenty twenty. Stop. No. <laughs> So um, this is what the list I've assembled, and the guys are going to help me dissect this. Uh, next week, we are going to be doing worst breakups in NHL history. And this time, we'll have a full list to go with that for you guys. Uh, for starters, n- number 10, Mika Zibanejad goes off for six points in the second period or a 9 nothing win against the, same, uh, against the Philadelphia Flyers. Um I, I remember watching this game live and we did our first ever um, what would be called bar talk. It was just called shot beer by everyone. And uh, one of the questions I asked John was Mika Zibanej had over under 10 goals. And he went past 10 goals in like three games after saying that. But um, we were texting back and forth with each other. That's why he said they lost the room. Uh, that's when, sorry, when, Quinn lost the room. That's what we all be- believed. Yeah. Uh, number nine, the Sabres beat the Flyers after losing 18 games in a row. Uh, and the first and the game before that, they actually, the Flyers came back, tied it in the final two minutes, and then won in overtime. So there was that one. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov and Alexei Lafreniere score their first NHL goals in overtime. And if there's any way you want two great rookies to do that, Austin Matthews scoring his 40th goal of the season. Cause I, I think, I still think he had an incredible year and he finished with 41 in 52 games. That's just nuts. Uh, Battle of Florida. That, that to me was the best first round series, uh, especially that game one. Whew. The guy John has covered extensively this season. Connor McJesus scores his 100th point of the season, and they still get swept. So, <laughs> you think Jack Eichel's frustrated? Uh, how much is Connor McDavid frustrated? Um, although he still has his next spine. Vegas coming back from a two nothing deficit to beat Colorado. Uh, we all thought Colorado was just going to roll to the Stanley Cup Finals. That didn't happen. Islanders win their final game in Nassau Coliseum, capping off a deep playoff run. Unfortunately, sorry, Anthony, they lost in game seven. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens coming back from 3-1 against the Maple Leafs. I still can't believe that that happened, but you win two games in overtime. And then it's Toronto, they're, they're just chokers, let's be honest. Um, they make the Stanley Cup Finals. And Tampa Bay hoists second straight Stanley Cup after circumventing the salary cap. <laughs> All right, boys. Break it, break it down. What would you say? Are there any ones that I might have missed? Um, Alexander Ovechkin passing uh, Mike Gartner and Phil Esposito was high up on the list for me because I, I thought that was super impressive. Yeah, I had that on my. Um, I had I, that list too. The, the NHL takes Lake Tahoe was one of mine. Oh, me too. Hockey porn. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, and another one that I had was um, was at the was uh, on my list was at the bottom was uh, Ryan Pollock's save of the year. Yeah, that's on mine too. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't even have Tampa Bay uh, as one of my moments. They're an honorable mention for me winning winning the cup again. It just it it, it was just such a boring series. It just it was a series that I knew was coming. Um, so I didn't even have them winning the cup as one of my moments. All right, Anthony, what did you have? Your your ones that are different because uh, I, I do have to say the Ryan Pollock one is one that I completely just forgot. Oh, so, so I have a thing. I'll look because I don't remember that. So oh, you also uh, didn't have um, the the New York Rangers overhaul, which I had firing Gorton and Davidson yeah. and Quinn. Because that's not a top moment of the year for me. That's why. <laughs> uh, and to me, I, I listen. I'm not saying these are my like my absolute all favorite moments. I'm saying that these are some of the most interesting moments of the entire season. Yeah, that's how I played it. I'm not saying my favorite. Some of the most interesting. Moments, I, I, but, yeah, I didn't um, necessarily. You know. This is a good one. <laughs> Anthony, really, really, I don't mind. 
<laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. Um, so number ten, I had Zabinajad six point night against the Flyers. Um, you know, obviously that was pretty ridiculous when any when any player gets more than even four points, five points in a game. That's pretty special. Um, number nine, and this truthfully could have been higher um, because at some moments I had a tear in my eye just seeing the emotion back in buildings. But NHL arenas, welcome back fans. Uh, see fans in, ho- in a hockey arena again was really cool. Um, number eight, uh, Beauvilliers' overtime winner in, in game six when he scored and then kind of got on his knees and slid a little bit, and which ended up being the last game ever at the Coliseum. Um, you know, that, that was really special, even though we lost game six. Well, um, number seven, Rangers fire J.D. and Gordon, which we were on the air for. I remember, Mark, you announcing it and seeing the reactions of me and Philk. Um, that was a pretty uh, noteworthy <laughs> move league-wide. Um, number six, the that Lake was Tahoe. Our well, first four games. ever live stream. Yep. But the Lake Tahoe, that was like hot porn, just picturesque, beautiful. The mountains in the background, the water doesn't get any better than that. Um, five, Ovechkin passes Garten. Aaron Esposito and his quest to catch Kretzky, which, side note, he's only one goal behind uh, Marcel Dion, five. Uh, so that one he'll, he'll probably get very early in the season. Um, number four, Ryan Pollock's game-saving save in game four. Again, that was unbelievable. I think I was there, and I think a lot of the people around me and my side of the building probably had no idea that he was even there. We all thought the puck was in, so that was a ridiculous moment. Um this one, no, none of you guys mentioned, I think it gets lost just because maybe it's not a sexy stat like goals or points, but uh, Patrick Marlowe uh, surpassing Gordy Howe for the most ever games played in the National Hockey League. Um, you know, it takes, it takes a special player, someone with longevity, to play that long, to, to have the most games played ever. I think that's, that's, a, really, that's a really good record. Um, who knows? We'll see that broken again. Uh, number two, McDavid reaches 100 points. I mean, what else could you say? 100 points and only in a 56-game season. Simply incredible. And number one, even though I hate it, I have to give them to do the Lightning win back-to-back cups. Well, before John gives his list, Enrico Lombardi! <laughs> well, I'll go back, Enrico. I'll go back. Uh, yeah, the, and Matt, the beer cans thrown onto the ice. I, I still, I, I, I understand it a little bit, but not, not that much. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that comment. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Warren's got to trade it. But you know what? I think the one thing about, just to address yours, the Marlowe thing, you're right about that. I think the only reason why it, it should be more celebrated, maybe some people like me go, you know, Thornton's got a shot at it. Uh, I don't think he is. Because Wait, I, was I that think yeah, play true. a few more years. But we was that Pittsburgh or was that Tampa Bay that did? Yeah. That? Uh, I, was it Pittsburgh? I think yeah, it was, I, I thought I'm it was not Tampa sure Bay. if it was Pittsburgh. I thought it was Tampa Bay that did that with um. With Jamel Smith, um, Matthew Joseph, and um, yeah, who's the other one that I'm thinking of? Uh, I thought that was, I thought that was Tampa Bay. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, J.B. Brown is the one I was thinking of, and that's uh, he, yeah, he's not. Wait, with actually, AZ is saying you might be right. It might be Tampa Bay. I think it was Tampa that did that. I, I, I'm pretty sure too. I know two of the players were Jamel Smith and Matthew Joseph. I know that for a fact because P.O. Joseph is is Matthew's brother in Pittsburgh. But uh, I, I don't think Pittsburgh has any other uh, players of color on that team. Well, again, uh, it's it's great seeing the diversity of the sport being on display, and of course seeing uh, K. Andre Miller breaking through with the Rangers and having, you know, a, a little bit of a rough start, and but he's he's he's, he's looking good. He um, did. Yeah, he got he got better as the season went along, and then the Truba injury, he kind of hit a rookie wall at the same time. It was a tr- it was the the Truba injury. So, but I, I expect more from Miller this year. I think he's going to be good. And um, uh, Mikey uh, brought it up before that the defense is basically set for the Rangers. The only question Pretty really much. is who's going to be the left side third pairing. So no, that that's Patrick Nemeth. That, is that's, Patrick Nemeth? That's Patrick Nemeth. The, the, the real question is, is, does Neil Zunquist take the third side right pairing? 
I I don't see any reason how how he would. Yeah, I, I mean, unless he doesn't impress in training camp, I don't see any reason not not to be. <laughs> but um, John, go ahead. What did you get? All right. So, uh, like I said before, my number ten was Ryan Pollock's save of the year. I just thought that was ridiculous. Um, we all thought that puck was going in where that was going to be a tie game, and that was probably going to lead to the end of the Islander season. But Ryan Pollock. Um, do we get any update as to whether Varlamov actually uh, took Ryan Pollock out for that steak dinner? <laughs> we should. I mean, we we I mean, we should we should get we should get Varlamov on here and ask him even in his broken English if we he took Ryan Pollock out to his uh, out, out to like Ruth's Chris or something like that for a nice steak. So good porterhouse there. Yeah. Uh, Number nine for me was uh, last OT uh, winner, his first career goal against Buffalo. I just thought that was awesome. Um, number eight was Zibanejad's six-point games. Remember, two games. games of six points. And one of them was six points in one period. One yeah, that was period. the one on St. Patrick's Day. And by the yes. way, just, just for the record on this one, uh, I, I disclosed it in the editorial that I did back when this happened. But he had six points, tying the record or breaking the Well, tying the NHL record, but breaking the Rangers record that was yes. held by Bill Cook. And if you ever want to know about Bill Cook, look up Amazing Sports Stories on the Internet. It is about, it's, a, it's a story about um, the old man in the net is the name of the episode. It's about Lester Patrick dressing for game two of the Stanley Cup Finals versus the Montreal Maroons. You're going to recognize Bill Cook. Because that was played by this guy. All right. Ah, yeah, there we go. Shameless <laughs> plug. I love it. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. That's that's what the internet is for. All right. Keep going. All right, so so uh, that was eight. Uh, number seven for me was Austin Matthews scores 40 goals. Um, for reference, Alexander Ovechkin, when they played a 48-game season in 2012-13, won the Rocket Richard. A whopping 33 goals in 48 games. So uh, Matthews had seven more in eight more games. So he was on that exact same pace. But the scary part is, is that Ovechkin actually started off that season poorly after two bad seasons in a row, goal, uh, goal scoring wise, two of his worst. So uh, yeah. that was, to me was very impressive. Uh, number six was the NHL takes on Lake Tahoe. Again, what do I need to say? Hockey porn. That's it. Um, number five was the overhaul in May. Uh, they fired Gorton and Davidson and Quinn. Uh, that was just nuts. It was a nuts time to be a Ranger fan. Um, so uh, that I, I don't I really need to say a whole lot more about that. Number four for me was the Battle of Florida. Uh, I was reminded of that series, especially in that first game, of why I love playoff hockey so much. I just – it was an incredible game. That series was just a bloodbath. It was great. Uh, we need more playoff series like that. Uh, number three, NHL fans back in arenas. Um, that was a big one because it just – it didn't feel the same without the fans. We're happy to be back. Hopefully um, no more of this COVID stuff. Hopefully this thing gets killed off and we can go back to our normal lives and keep going to games. Uh, number two – Ovechkin passes Gartner and Esposito, and um, I have a ton of respect for Alexander Ovechkin. Guy is probably going to be considered the greatest goal scorer of all time when it's all said and done, even if he doesn't break Wayne Gretzky's record. So for him to pass a, a childhood favorite of mine and Mike Gartner is very impressive. Uh, to pass Phil Esposito, who was one of the greatest goal scorers of all time, is another one. And then for me, it's McJesus breaking 100 points. It's one of the best seasons we've seen in the last 30 years. Mario Lemieux's 1993 season might be the only season I can say is legitimately better than that in the last 30 or so years because Lemieux scored 160 points in only 60 games, and LaFontaine played the full season and scored 148. 148. Yeah, so that was, that was how uh, – that was how impressive that 93 season from Lemieux was, but Connor McDavid was scoring at a over 140 point pace, about 150. I, I think I'd have to go back and do the exact numbers, but you're not going to see many seasons like this. What McDavid was doing is just other level stuff. 
I mean, you're already talking about a guy who has a Hall of Fame resume in his sixth season. Six. Yeah. Yeah, it's he's 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 really up there. Um, I want to give Anthony a little bit of PTSD for a second because <laughs> uh because if I recall correctly in the nineteen ninety three season, you went Lemieux one sixty nine, Lafontaine one forty eight. And third, I believe, was Pierre Corjean in scoring. I think he had 132 that year. Do you ever think yeah. what the Islanders would have been like if Dale Hunter didn't put that in on him? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't get traded two years later in '95. Um, you know, I. I don't know. Yeah, that was one of the most to this day. That was the most one of the most scummiest plays I you could a hockey player could have made. I mean, Agreed. that play was over. Goal had been scored. Just, I'm glad Hunter got the book thrown at him. But that was that was really that was classless as it gets. Yeah, Turn. and he was supposed to come and play the um, uh, come and play the Islanders. And I think Alexei Kovalev speared him, and then he was out a couple games, so that he couldn't play the Islanders, and he, <laughs> he had to wait extra time. So yeah, uh, Terzon yeah. was one of three Islanders that I've ever actually liked while he was an Islander. The other two were Pat Lafontaine and Ziggy Palfy for me, and that play to me is one of the dirtiest plays of all time. It's top three for me, uh, I, number I, one, but it's top three for me. It might be number one. I'd have to double check a lot of things, but that's that's just it was heinous. Goal scored. He was already in middle of celebrating. Yeah. Yep. And, and, yeah, and Hunter, his arms up. yeah, had his arms up. And yeah. what that did for the rest of Turjan's career, he ended up looking over his shoulder every time he went to the boards. I think he shouldn't do it anyway, but that's a different story. All right. Yeah, that, you know what? You know what? I, I just thought of an idea. We we could do a top ten dirtiest plays of all time list too. At one point, we could do a video for that. Well, well we're gonna have to make sure we get all these videos. Sadly, ready there's to go. been enough of them. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there's been way too much. We're gonna have we're gonna have to think of all the different ones that are there. But um, are there any top moments of the year that we're missing? I know a lot of people mentioned stuff, but. They're kind of a little bit negative. The firing of JD, the overhauling. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the – wow. Yeah, it reminds me of that scene a little bit, except he didn't pop the helmet off and put a, and put him on the ice. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, RIP Patrick Swayze, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but um, we, if we missed any moments, put them down in the comments below. And, of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, which I keep forgetting to put out some of these, some of the gifts that I got on there, like, uh, bing, uh, or any of these, but I cover Anthony's face sometimes. So, I don't, you know, we all want to look at Anthony. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.